Right, for those that don't know what's going on on the YouTube, because this is public videos I'm posting, um, I'm building a bit of a special car here. This might look like a normal RC car, but it's a little bit different. Basically, there was a challenge on Facebook to make a chassis, a Tamiya chassis, go as fast as possible. Uh, the chassis was prescribed as an MF01X, and it's not known for going very fast. It's a four-wheel drive rally chassis, and the little game is, yeah, make it go ballistic, basically. So this car is, in fact, let's roll it out of the way. This car, so this is one I'm very familiar with, and a lot of people will already be familiar with, my Project 959. So this is a, quite a high sitting, it's like 15 mil ground clearance under there. 4x4 four four rally chassis, quite compact. You can see underneath it's quite a compact chassis. If I take the body off, you can see just how compact that is. 4x4 four four chassis, everything fits in there. A modular chassis, so you can change the wheelbase. Now that's 210 millimeters. Um, a lot of people in the challenge are running the stock chassis. Uh, I thought I'll go for the unlimited class because, yeah, I'm just a bit like that, I guess. And unlimited means you can make all sorts of changes. Limited class, you couldn't change a whole lot to it. It has to be pretty much, pretty much stock. So I took that chassis and I've made this with it. And the difference is this is now, if I put that on top there, 280 millimeter wheelbase, not 210. And this is a standard Tamiya Mercedes C11 bodywork on it. We have to stick to a, an official Tamiya body kit, um, which I make custom parts for already on the shop. I had this spare, so I decided I'm gonna go with this. So the challenge was getting all that rally chassis under here. It's, it's 200 mil wide, 205 at the back, instead of 160, and of course the longer wheelbase. So I popped the body off, and first thing I did on the body was put a, a rear stabiliser fin uh, for hopefully some stability at speed. Vertical stabiliser, like you'd see on aircraft. And body off, which I see there, you can see, we get this one back again. You can see the difference in the chassis lengths. And of course, ride height. So this one has been dropped considerably. I've got, I think, <coughs> five, six millimeter ground clearance at the back at the moment. At the moment at the front, I've got four. I need a little bit more than that. I'll explain what's going on there. So the chassis has been extended. This part in the middle has been extended and uh, Someone online I bumped into, Honza Pabez, I hope I pronounced that correctly, um, had already drawn up this um, centre section, so I didn't have to model it. And they kindly said, oh, I'll make it just long enough for 280 mil. So that was done. I modified it to put a recess in the top um, to put the speed controller in. This is the speed controller sits in the middle there. And it has um, a... Um, the battery compartment underneath. Typically the battery compartment is in this section, but I didn't want it that far forward, so it's back mid midships. What else has been done? So if I start at the back, so the C11 parts that I make, I make rear stabilizers, uh, the supports for the wing, in alloy, but they were just a little bit too high for this kit, so I, I remodeled them and printed them in a carbon reinforced plastic. On the bottom there, you can just see the diffuser. So that's again modified from the C11 diffuser and then mixed in with the uh, rear skid plate and clamping assembly that I made for the Project 959. So that whole unit all clamps on, the two clamps are there. No holes in the chassis, it all slides together and locks on with two nuts. So that's that, combined with the diffuser, which I did it mainly for looks, but also it would probably give some um, ground effect under the motor there. Um, it's been dropped, as I say, I've modified the springs so they drop lower. I made new um, carbon reinforced um, wishbones here. 
It's running the standard uh, dog bones, the standard drive shafts, the standard length, um, but the tyres are 50 millimetre wide, so they're quite substantial foam tyres. Now, to get those wheels onto the stock hub, I had to make, and I've got a big box of parts here, but I don't, I, uh, I have a drive, one of the drive flanges, so that's a, a drive flange that fits in the wheel, and then some other bits and pieces. Yeah, I don't have them there, that hold on the wheel. So there's actually three, compa three components in there that allow me to bolt the wheel on. And then I put a cover on it, which is a bit similar to that one, and bolt on it and then stuck a tape over it in case the nut comes loose, uh, it remains captive. So that was a construction, same with the front wheels. And there I used these like turbo fin fan wheel covers. And again, stuck a plastic over that. Now, that's quite a wide track on there, and the wheels actually don't really conform to a typical steering setup because the wheel is outside the rotational axis of the hub. So the wheels are going to scrub a little bit, but it's built for straight line speed, so I'm not bothered too much about that. Uh, that's that, the springs. I made a new support here, which is cable keeps the cables tidy as well, and body posts. So the body posts use the same holes as the, the body shell, so I didn't have to draw any more um, body holes. The only thing I had to do was modify the shell by cutting out these turrets. I couldn't lower them anymore because then the whole suspension geometry changes, and I didn't want that. So that's the only thing. Um, moving along, another bit of cable management here. A printed clamp to hold the motor wires down, which also helps secure the speed controller. I'm only going to use a 2S short pack on this. I'm keeping to short packs just for weight. It's just doing straight line runs. So the center section was modified to house the battery, and I made uh, clamps which bolt on there. Um, so they're, they're, it's not a quick release, it's bolted in. If I need to change the battery, I can unbolt it. A little bit of tacky tape there to hold the balance lead down to keep it safe. And I'm just a little bit paranoid get about getting lipos smashed into the ground, so this is quite tough. So this is going to take a, a good th thump. I've put a, a skin on the bottom just to smooth out the joints, because the ground clearance is quite low. Uh, and close up the hole where the servo goes. If you look on the bottom of here, there's a hole where the servo head is servo saver and I don't want debris going in there at speed so that's blanked off. Uh, running at two wheel drive you might have noticed no drive shaft so the the front end you can see in in here the front end the bevel gears and everything drive shaft all missing so the front end is completely loose uh, no weight in there no differential in there um, gearing has been changed up the back I've got a 26 tooth pinion in there at the moment I've got a 27, 28, 29, 30. And we'll need some modification to get those in if I need them. Uh, this front section here, it's got some doors on it. You can see the black plastic doors where the cable's going in. So the receiver is in there, and typically that is the battery compartment on the original chassis. But I've put my receiver inside there. And again, I put a turret on here which clamps on the chassis, so the chassis is bolted together and the cable the cables go around there, so they're tidy. Uh, this unit on the front is a gyro, um, no, that's not a gyro, that's the GPS, and that measures the speed, G-forces or whatever we want, and that's held on with clips and a rubber band on a foam pad. You could stick it in there, but it needs to come out for charging, and the Velcro doesn't stick too well the Velcro I had, so rubber band. This little module on top, it's wired in now. It's a gyro unit, so the, basically that's going to help keep the front wheels pointing forwards. So if the back starts doing this, which it does, the front wheels will compensate and try and keep it in a straight line. So I can disconnect that if I need to, if I want to. And the front end is heavily modified. Let's 
I'll show you the front end of the stock car. You can already see, uh, yeah, these are parts that I make, but you can see we've got two big coilovers on here. This is pretty much the same, the bumper assembly, because I made it for this one and I've modified it for this one. This one's got a skid plate underneath because it's a higher ground clearance, and this one doesn't. This one's a lot beefier underneath because it's going to get hit there. Um, so instead of the springs, the coilover dampers, which I don't need all that travel on my car, I just need a little bit. Now that's just a little bit too little at the moment. So what I need to do, this part here, this uh, piece across the front is a transverse leaf spring style thing, which works independently on each side. You can see like that. But all I need to do is make a few variants, a different angle on them, so it's pushing the wheels a little bit higher, lower, and giving more ground clearance. And then this front turret assembly um, is all to hold the bodywork on, and two bolts to change the foam bumper if need be. But if it's going to hit anything at speed, all that shatters anyway, as it did on the first test run, which is good because it saves the chassis. Um, so there we are so far. This is... I'd like to try and keep it as elegant as possible. I've made as many parts, clips and brackets and things to hold stuff on. Cable management around the back, because the cable, I didn't want the cables flapping or rubbing under the bodywork. So there's cable management held onto the motor housing there. And then they come through the supports here to keep them tidy. And then they're pulled down there to keep them tidy. So no flapping. No wobbling around. Um, and also made a hole in the gearbox. I don't know if you can see it there. That's to get the mesh of the motor pinion and the um, main drive perfect. Because it's very it's critical to get the, the mesh of the gears correct. So they're not over tight, not over loose. And the first test run I did, which is the video, the other video, it ran very, very smoothly. The, all of it's going to be down to driver skill. The car's going to be pretty quick. It's not going to be as quick as uh, some of the guys out there. But like I said, it's become more of a challenge to me, a tinkering challenge in the evenings, after work, after Project 959, to make something um, yeah, that's a bit special. And the front arm's also new to give me the, um, this forward position for suspension. Uh, other than that, front turrets were sawn off, front suspension turrets for clearance on the bodywork. Other than that, it's, uh, it's pretty much standard actually. So to get to that, it's been some drawing, of course, and also some prototyping. <laughs> so they're all bits that have drawn, printed, Tested, say so for example, chassis, chassis compartment pieces with and without hole, diffuser options, um, front supports failed, and then uh, body post cable management stuff. So all bits and pieces that have been printed to get to this. So now the challenge is, for me, of course that's the antenna for the receiver. Um, the main challenge is now getting a piece of road, smooth asphalt, not concrete road like we have here, because this is minimal ground clearance and when it gets to speed it's going to start pushing down harder. Um, find a flat enough piece give it the beans. It's got to accelerate quite slowly, build up speed, otherwise those big fat tyres are just going to spin up. There's just not much weight on there. And when you decelerate, as you come off the throttle, the, you've got to be careful. The rear end is going to lock up and when it does that, it just spins out and will end up in the scenery. So I need to adjust the transmitter to not break, to roll freely and let it roll out. I am hoping, I've got 53 kilometres an hour now, that's about 33 miles an hour. I'm hoping for 100 kilometres an hour. Um, when I did the test run, it felt like it was 
very free running and it would achieve that and if I can get anywhere near that then I can start with confidence because I'm not used to driving these things at high speed um, then I can start changing the gearing on the back the pinions and maybe even put a different motor in I've got some other motors downstairs but that's all I'm going to do I'm not going to go ballistic with this I, I did have plans plan A was to use ducted fans but I'm not spending time on energy on something like this when I've got so many other pro ongoing projects that I need to finish. So that is my MF01 Experimental. Of course, what I could do is close in the floor underneath, but I think I'll leave it like that. Cheers.